Let's take a minute and work through these five capital budgeting questions. We'll do the first one first. A project has an initial cost of $52,125. It has expected net cash inflows of $12,000 per year for eight years and a cost of capital of 12%. So P11-1 says, what's the project's net present value? Okay, so down here, I've laid out the cash flows and the periods for you. Now, period zero means now, and so we're going to have to spend $52,125, and then we're going to result, the, well, the project is going to result in 12,000 of positive cash flows for the next eight years, and we're told to use a cost of capital of 12%. So taking advantage of what Excel can do for us, we type in equal NPV, if the left parenthesis, and then you could put in the, the values right here, but instead of doing that, I'll come up here to the insert function button and call up this function arguments, and then I'll point to where the information is provided. Cost of capital is given in cell C25, and then value one starts in cell C16. Now, read what value one says. It's payments equally spaced in time occurring at the end of each period. So the end of the first period is when we have to put in that information. We can just highlight all of it, and that will take. Now, when you're done with that, that's the net present value of just the positive cash flows. So we have to then add back the present value of the expected cash outlay. And the present value of a cash outlay paid today is whatever that cash outlay is. So there's, you know, we don't have to factor in time value of money on uh, something that's paid right now when we're trying to find the present value of it. So we just add back in that negative number or the cash outflow of 52,125 and we come up with a net present value of $7,486.68 if we were taking out to pennies. If to only to dollars, it, uh, rounded it'd be $7,487. Okay, now if you didn't want to solve this using Excel, let me slide this over a little bit for you. Um, you could solve it using the formula for present value, and that's given here. Now I find that to be a, uh, a you know, more complex and more difficult, so I prefer to use Excel. You could also solve it with a financial calculator. You would enter n equals 8, the interest rate would be 12. Right, that's our 12%. The payment negative 12,000, right? We're entering negative so that we get the answer back as a positive number. Um, and then the uh, future value is zero and we're gonna solve for present value. So you could use either of those techniques. Okay, next we'll answer the question, what's the internal rate of return? And the easiest way to solve this is, again, using Excel. Excel has an IRR function. So type in equal IRR, hit the left parenthesis, come up here to the insert function, and it just says, give me the values. So we just point to the values. Okay, it wants a guess. Um, if there was a cost of capital given, I would use that. But you could also leave it blank, and uh, I would think in 99.999% of the time, uh, you're going to get the same answer. Um, most of the time, with financial projections, I've never seen where the guess was needed. Now, you, the main reason they ask, they, they put that together, is there is a chance that internal rate of return could give you more than one response. The guess is more likely to, well, the guess will get you closer to the correct response uh, you need to calculate. So we'll put in the guess of 12%, we'll hit OK, and we get 16%. Now, I was curious if it's 16 on the nose, and uh, it is. Now, if by chance you didn't want to solve this with Excel, another option would be to use a financial calculator. Uh, you would input the appropriate cash flow into the register and solve for IRR using your financial calculator. Okay, next I'm gonna illustrate how you would solve the modified internal rate of return. 
um, you would type equal MIRR, hit the left parenthesis, and again, you could put the, var the variables or parameters in here, but I like to call up the insert function button, and then I just point to the values, just like the IRR function. But now it wants to know the finance rate and the investment rate. Okay, so finance rate is the interest rate you paid on the money, and the reinvestment rate would be the rate you earned. Given that they only give us a cost of capital, we're going to assume that that's what you use. And in fact, in every MIRR problem I've ever seen, we use the capital rate for both. When we're done, we calculate the modified internal rate of return to be 13.9%. And frequently, you'll see that the modified internal rate will fall below uh, the internal rate of return. So MIRR will fall below IRR, and it will do that whenever the IRR is higher than the cost of capital. Okay? It's just the way the math works. All right, now... Here's how you could solve MIRR if you were using a financial calculator, and you could certainly do this by hand as well. A uh, little bit of theory of how MIRR works. It takes all those cash flows and it calculates the future value at the end of the last period. Okay, so you would calculate future value for each of these cash flows independently, add them up, then calculate the present value of that sum using the appropriate interest rate. And of course, you could use a different interest rate to show the investment, right? The reinvestment rate, that would be the future value. And then you could use the discount rate or the cost of capital to bring it back. But of course, we're using the cost of capital for both. Um, but that's mathematically how you could solve it. So you could input n equals 8, the interest per year is 12%, present value is 0, payment is 12,000, calculate future value, and then bring that future value back to the present, or actually, you know, set the, set the present value equal to the cash outflow it's costing you now, 52,125, I said that incorrectly, and set the payment equal to 0 and solve for the interest rate. That's what's going on behind the scenes with the MIRR function using Excel. Okay, now I've gone ahead and typed in the abbreviation so that they match the questions here. The next thing we're going to solve is the profitability index. And the profitability index involves taking the net present value of the cash flow, so let's calculate that first. And this is the net present value of the cash inflows only. Okay, so we're going to take 12% or the cash flows that you expect in the future. All right, and we can calculate that. And so we've got 59,000 is the cash flows expected to accrue to us as a result of this project. And then you have to divide it um, by the initial cash flow. Now I've provided the initial cash flow as a negative number, so I'm going to say uh, divide it by the negative of that, which will turn it to a positive number. And when we're done with that, uh, we get the answer is 1.14. Now it's an index. It should not be a dollar sign or a percentage. So 1.14 is the profitability index. Okay, and if you wanted to solve this using the formulas, you would do so using the present value formula or the net present value formula that you can see here. Of course, that involves more calculations. So we come up with that same $59,611.68 of present value, and, uh, and then you would divide it by the initial cash outlay. Okay, uh, Or with the financial calculator, you'd find the present value first and then simply divide it by the initial cash outlay. Okay, and finally we're going to find payback, and uh, I find the easiest way to do this is just compute the cumulative cash outflows. Now, the reason I like to do it this way is you don't always have the same amount in the future. So this approach allows you to do it uh, and permits, it to permits you to use this approach 
if the future cash inflows vary and they're not constant. So if we go with cumulative cash outflows, we know that we start off with negative 52, 125, and we get a positive number. So at the end of one year, we're, uh, we're in the hole 40, 125. Now if we take the negative plus the positive, we can just run this number forward. Now we don't need dollar sign, so I'm going to copy this down. And you keep going until you're positive, and it, it well actually, you don't need to compute it going forward. Now, what we can see here is at the end of four years, um, we go positive. So somewhere between year four and five, we go positive. So how could we calculate that? Well, we could say, well, it's equal to four years plus a portion of a year. And how we would do the portion of the year is you would take the 4125 is an absolute dollar value and divide it by the next year's cash flow. You get a partial year amount. It comes up to be 4.34. Okay, I'll hit the F2 so you can see how I did that. I just took the, the percentage of the year that 4125 would be over the next year's cash flow. Now, in this example, we didn't have to actually do it that way. You could have just taken uh, 52,125 and divided it by 12,000 to come up with payback because the cash flows were constant per year once we uh, started getting positive cash flows at the end of year one. Okay, to support what I just said, I posted uh, some language that shows you just take the 52,125, the initial cash outflow, and divide it by the annual cash inflow. Okay, and that's this problem uh, showing you how to tackle NPV, IRR, MIRR, PI, and payback, which some people also refer to as just simple payback. I hope you found this helpful.